promise that I'll tell you more about myself later in the talk, but for now, I'd like to invite you to close your eyes, take a deep breath, and imagine yourself falling into a deep sleep. You're suddenly awakened by the loud sound of a horse in the street. You wipe your tired eyes and drag yourself out of the bed that you swear can't be yours. As you walk over to the window, the sight outside is everything but familiar. You see old roads, old buildings, two men bartering in the street across from you that you can only place to be in the mid-1800s. After violently shaking yourself, trying to wake yourself up, you come to the realization that by some unknown means, you've been catapulted back in time nearly 200 years, and all that you've brought with you is everything that you've learned up until today. And if you haven't opened your eyes yet, you can now. So after a few hours of adjustment, you find the thought crossing your mind. Will I be able to adjust to this time easier than the people of this time could adjust to mine? Sure, the day-to-day -day life in this time has challenges that have been worked out in your time, but your day-to-day -day life has so much more complexity than you could imagine in this time. You come to the conclusion that with your knowledge of the Industrial Revolution, massive science, and med medical breakthroughs, you should have no trouble adjusting to this time. As you plot how you'll have your impact on this time, many different breakthroughs come to mind. You see the mass production of the car right here in Detroit. You see the power of science and medicine to bring forth the exponential power of the next revolution. And you see the power of civil rights to change how the next generation would live. But as you sit down to start to create each one of these, an overwhelming feeling of doubt comes upon you as you realize that while you might be able to predict these, you never, you never truly went far enough to truly understand what makes them tick. And in this time, there's no internet, no Google to back you up. You realize that your peer, Charles Babbage in England, is already working on the first computer, but has no idea where it's going to go. You, on the other hand, know exactly where it will go, but don't know the first step to actually create it. All that you wish now is that you had used the nearly endless resources in your time to learn more and understand how the world worked around you. You can all come back to 2019 now, so you will get a second chance at this. I like to summarize this story with a question. If you were sent back to some arbitrary time with everything that you knew up until today, could you create the known future or just simply predict it? Could you invent the science, technology, and medicine of the future? Could you prevent terrible wars that you know are coming? And have you come to know enough about the power of civil and human rights that you yourself could be a voice that changes the next generation? Most of us, including myself, realize that the answer to this is no. But with today's resources, no does not need to be the answer. With a simple search online, we can find nearly anything that crosses our mind, no matter how simple or technical we would like it. A thought never needs to stop at I wonder any longer. And it's only been in about the last decade or so that information has become this available. For anyone who considers themselves to be curious, there's never been a better time to be alive but many of us still find ourselves taking this opportunity for granted. I like to imagine curiosity as a network of trails. As we travel through life, we're constantly going down a main path towards a beautiful destination. Alongside of us, there are more paths branching out every way. These are curiosities that we can follow. Some of these have known destinations. Some of them are mysteries and some of them are land unexplored. But no matter what, we must follow them all the way to their end if we wish to truly take in the beauty. Sometimes we find ourselves following these trails just to take in the beauty of the destination and turn back to our main path of life. Other times, we find ourselves only making it halfway and turning back, never seeing what's at the end. 
But in both of these situations, the experience of navigating the rugged terrain makes us all the readier to take on our next experience. Other times, we find ourselves in a destination so beautiful that there is no reason for us to turn back. This is when curiosities turn into our passions. And in this place, there are many more trails branching in every direction that we would have never found if we did not take this one curiosity to its core. Now that we're in this place, we are living in a world which we never pictured ourselves, but seems to be our main path now. So I told you, I would tell you more about myself later in the talk. And the reason that I bring up these points is because a few years ago, I asked myself the same question. And it's taken me on a wonderful journey. I'd always been very interested in the latest science technology, but never really understood how the world worked around me. So I vowed to change this. I soon found myself learning to code on my own in my free time. From here, I picked up an intense passion for artificial intelligence and machine learning. As I continued to go deeper and deeper, I soon found myself working with large corporations, startups, and on my own projects. For all of these things, I made a promise to myself that I would not move further until I understood how every tool worked down to every single line of code. Later on, I employed these methods to take up a passion for science and physics. And in my studies of quantum mechanics, I saw a bridge between the trail I had taken for machine learning and the trail I had taken for quantum mechanics. This allowed me to detail a new method and release a paper that I would never have imagined doing before I took this journey. Most recently, I brought together all of these curiosities, physics, computer science, design to develop an idea that I had had and invent one of the world's smallest EEG devices, Nurio. This device allows you to visualize your mental activity and health, but at the same time, anybody, regardless of ability, can use it to control their connected world with a simple thought. When we decide to learn something new, we invite a whole new world of possibilities for everyone. And everyone here at TEDx Detroit is doing that right now. Our unique matrix of knowledge and skills allows us to imagine things that only we could, but everyone else always wanted. The more we learn, the more we widen this potential. And as these curiosities accumulate in our mind, new ideas, that happen because of collisions between things that we've decided to learn build the future. So it only makes sense for us to foster this subconscious activity by taking every opportunity we can to learn more. Um, I, when, when we follow our curiosities, they take us to places we would never imagine. So I invite you that next time you find yourself learning something new and think that you've learned it, you ask yourself, do I truly know? What happens next is a leap into a place unknown, a place that only you could arrive at, where you find yourself mastering the past, embracing the present, and shaping the future, not just for yourself, but for the entire world. Thank you. Thank you.